Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. So, as we know, uh, you know, certainly the plague upon the land was a very disruptive event, and you know, it seems that there are possibilities out there that there may be something similar coming. We've talked about uh, certain companies uh, that are owned by certain VP nominees <laughs> and their ties to some of this big, big business that's out there. Yeah. Uh, it is big business. Everything you see is big business, really. And there's signs, you know, again, that there's something else that may be brewing. As you see, bird flu, Australia. Victoria, who took the most extreme measures during the plague upon the land, are locking down farms, movement of animals, even equipment. You know, this, this is all, it's been going on. There's been so much of the same going on. Uh, and I think there's some, at some point, we get into a sense of complacency. But we have to remember, this is very much spiritual warfare, and, and spiritual meaning uh, interdimensional frequency warfare. It's all about lowering our frequency. Like, you know, you got to look at some of the celebrations they've had in other Olympics. This was 2012. How is this going to get you motivated, happy, and excited? How is this going to make you feel positive? It's like a grim reaper. Looks like he's holding some sort of ouchie. There's kids in hospital beds. It, it's just so dark. You know, nurses and doctors dancing around like zombies. <clears throat> it's so dark. How could anybody look at this as good, wholesome family entertainment? A uh, very positive frequency here. Uh, no, it's not. It, it's the world that we live in. It's it's the system that we're in. And we've talked about the uh, opening ceremonies of the Olympics. And, you know, wow. This one was a doozy. Absolutely. There's a lot of focus on certain aspects of it. But this was in there as well. And what do we see? We see a red and white balloon. We've talked a lot about red balloons. We've talked a lot about balloons over the United States. We've talked about Chinese balloons. Now, the Chinese balloons, to my knowledge and my memory, uh, were white. And yet the red balloons, uh, there have been red balloons out there. And there's military balloons that watch for, uh, you know, intruding uh all sorts of things from drones to fighters to uh, satellites and you name it. There's there's balloons, balloons, balloons. Why do they have this? They have a balloon. They have the Statue of Liberty. They have something in the forefront that hits you like some sort of nasty uh, virus molecule. There's what looks to be satellite coming into the picture, I'm guessing. Now, you look at the Statue of Liberty, my initial impressions was that she was like shot up and mangled. I mean, you could see the, the points are all broken off and stuff. Cindy was getting more of a, like, wow, is, that, is, she, is she suffering from flesh-eating disease? Um, meaning more uh, biological. Now, I thought about the biological side because my initial feeling was the balloons uh, were telling of uh, China, but then, you know, also it does feel like it's, it's multiple things, you know, it's, it's some sort of invasion. It feels like it's some sort of biological warfare. Uh, there's something going on with satellites, uh, that's going to be very important. Yeah, it's very, very curious to say the least. And why in the world would this be in something that's supposed to be a happy event? Uh, unless, you know, you are the opposite of what the world thinks happy should be, uh, <laughs> which again is the system that is in charge. They are exactly the opposite. With them, up is down, down is up, good is bad, and bad is good. You know, you got to wonder those who are putting uh, these events together and that are doing the artwork and they're doing the editing. Are they asking any questions or are they just doing? Do they ask to themselves? Do they ask coworkers? Who, who are the folks that put this art together? You know, I, I appreciate art all across the board. And this just has me curious because I would be asking questions if I were having to edit this or do anything. Would love to understand someone who is doing this stuff and do they, do they ask the questions? But I, I would 
think that they're probably just doing their job. And, and I'm looking at the satellites thinking there's something more to that particular satellite. Um, I don't know what right now, but it feels like a very special satellite. Um, yeah, to me, when I saw the marks on the face and the elbow there, I'm thinking flesh-eating virus and we're looking at the molecule and it looks, um, you know, like a, a viral type of thing. What's going through people's heads? The, the even the designers. Never mind those who are doing the art editing. The designers. What are they told? Gosh, I'm so curious about this. And where where does that information come from? One thing one thing that I used to do is like follow the resources back. So in one of my jobs, so that I could uh, figure out where the source of whatever it is we're hunting for. Where does that source come from? And and I would go back and back and back one step at a time until I figured out the original source. I would love to find the original source. Where does this come from? And actually talk to that person and see what do they think? Well, you know, they're going to have ties back to the same old, same old. This is this is how it goes. So, yeah, something feels very, very uh, spiky. And the it does remind me of Resident Evil. You know, again, everything is in these movies. Resident Evil is is a series of movies and, and was based on a game uh, that came out, gosh, I don't know, decades ago. I mean, it's old. This thing's been around forever. 20 years, I guess. It's probably been 20 years. It'd be curious to see. I mean, was it exactly 20 years? Yeah, you know, because what, what happens? There's an outbreak that turns... Uh, it's it's a purposeful outbreak. It turns out to be uh, that turns peoples into zombies. The old zombie apocalypse. But look at the colors: the alternating red and white umbrella. Well, that was um, that was that was the Will Smith movie. Oh, okay. Was a cure for cancer. Yeah, this stands for Umbrella Corporation, which turns out to be. Just an absolutely sat satanic, diab diabolical, evil entity, which I really think, you know, the whole concept of corporations is, e is, is very evil in my mind. But, you know, when you look at the symbol, why did they pick that symbol for the Umbrella Corporation? Because, again, just like with The Simpsons, you know, this is all being seeded into our subconscious uh, minds for a reason. And it, it does at the same time equate and it does at the same time tell you exactly what's happening. I've shared with you, um, I think his name was, we have his book, Enrico Bacchiardini. I want to say <clears throat> Graham Hancock did the introduction to his um, book, which was talking about all the different vimanas and the different types of vimanas. Vimanas are flying vehicles in the uh, Hindu world and you know there's the wars of the gods that are very very uh detailed <laughs> uh in their description in the hindu uh holy books and it's right out there it's just as simple and blatant as it could be that these beings are extraterrestrial interdimensional yes there's also inner earth beings there's all sorts of beings are all around us all the time interacting with humans and they were interacting in the open with humans in ages past. Now, before the invasion of Earth by those that we would call the Asuras or the Anuna, if you're talking Hawaii, or the Anunnaki, if we're talking, again, ancient Babylon, Sumeria, uh, you know, the Earth was a relatively peaceful place with all sorts of beings coming and going all the time. And and people, for the most part, got along. Of course, there you know, no perfect world. But, you know, before they came, it was a world that had a totally different system because there was no uh, oligarchy. There was no central power. Uh, there was no uh, such thing as kingship and queenship. And there was no royalty. It, it was a totally different system. We see a little bit of this when we go over and see some of the ancient ruins over in the Indus Valley. We do with the Harappan uh, civilization and some of the others. They always want to make the Sumerian, Babylonian, Akkadian, um, and those uh, of that particular area lineage and really power structure 
seem to be the oldest on the planet. They want to make themselves out to be the oldest on the planet, but they're not. Because before they came, people didn't have war going on like we do and we have for thousands of years. They rule through war. They rule through debt slavery. And when you look to this, you know, it looks like a Maltese cross to me, doesn't it? Uh, it looks a lot like a Maltese cross, you know, Knights Hospitaller organization in, established in 1567 during the Crusades, again, to take the Holy Land back from Islam. And in, in my point of view, Islam and modern Christianity were created just to control minds and to you know, have a real simple way of pitting one against the other as we have uh, more Christians than anything on the world. And then the second biggest uh, population as far as religious persuasion is is Islam, which will surpass Christianity <clears throat> perhaps in you know a normal lifetime here. So, but they're on a collision course because they've always been on a collision course. This is the purpose of it, is to create just an opportunity for nonstop conflict based on dogma. Everything they do is right out there in the open. By the way, doesn't this Anunnaki representation look like you have a Maltese cross on? Look at that again. Yeah, you know, we find the symbolism. In fact, the cross is all about this power structure. Oh, there's the Pope. You know, again, you got the same thing on. You know, again, <coughs> Sitchin, who, who, you know, the Anunnaki uh, story is not based on Zechariah Sitchin. And, and he might have been really, in some ways, a disinfo agent just so it could be discredited. But, you know, before Sitchin translated anything, these were already translated um, back in the 1870s, at least the first ones. We had the Rosetta Stone uh, be discovered so we could uh, start to translate these stories. But even if we take the whole Sumerian stories out, we still have stories from around the entire world that talk about the same invasion. And it's just that what the power structure has done is roll around the world, wiping out one indigenous people after another. Yet they still have their symbolism right on them. This is their power structure. As you can see, this is this is the same power structure. It's interesting again going back to that book by um, you know Enrico again. He says that there is one particular group of uh, these beings, these asuras, that drive certain vimanas. They use certain vimanas. We see, we've seen a lot of cylindrical <clears throat> vimanas in the sky and. Yes, usually when you see those long cylindrical cigar-shaped ones, those are draconian ships. Uh, oh, by the way, this is ancient. And look, isn't that another one of those? Yes, you know, again, this is what's represent, representing. Well, one of their specialties is germ warfare, biological warfare. And it's even there in the Vedic texts that this one particular group specializes in bio-warfare. Doesn't it seem like there is certainly a group on the planet right now that's doing the same thing? You know, it is It is really, really curious. And um, just thinking back a little bit and doing the, the Vedic chart, and we had to throw this in for the VP, um, looking at his chart and understanding the type of spirit soul, it does, in my opinion, looks like he does come from that uh, aspect of the asuras who do deal with bioweapons so it's more of a choice when you get here in this body you know what are you going to do what what is it where do you want to go you know are you going to climb up are you going to change are you going to be better so we'll have to see we couldn't help but throw this in here too it was uh, entertaining to us so what's the answer? Uh, the, this is the answer right there. Just, you know, take the whole system and stick it in the dumpster. It's not even worth recycling. This system is not worth recycling. The whole system needs to go in the dumpster. And humanity is getting awakened to that point. Now, I, I don't think that anybody anywhere that can get the attention of a billion people uh, I would trust totally, but at the same time, you know, Edward Snowden. Now, was this all 
on purpose, everything with Snowden? Is it to give you a certain disclosure to get you to trust him totally because he went through hell just like, um, what was the other guy that was just released? Uh, oh, the, 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 the facial hair, what's his name? Uh, Julian yeah. Assange. You know, Julian Assange and Edward Snowden went through hell. So, I mean, most people would automatically just totally, totally trust them and listen to everything. Now, I wouldn't trust anybody, honestly. You don't even, you know, trust us unless you feel resonant with us. If you can sense something um, in us that that feels genuine to you, that's one thing. Um but recognize again, they will they will absolutely give you a whole bunch of truth to at the last moment get you to drop off a cliff. But here you go. Uh, if this is Edward Snowden giving an existential warning to Americans, if you stick out, you will become non-normative, an anomaly. He warns that within five to ten years, big data will track every aspect of our lives on the blockchain. In order to create predictive behavioral models, these models will control whether or not you're given a loan, whether or not you'll be hired for a job, or how you participate in the marketplace. And yeah, I mean, we understand that, and, and I think most of us have understood that for a long time. Yet, what do we have right now? We have bricks going and not using the SWIFT system for those that study the financials it looks like they're creating an alternative it's hard to judge you know exactly you know who's the good guy and who's the bad guy i think the safe assumption is to not trust anything that has been in significant power during this kali yuga i wouldn't trust any of them so i'm always looking um, with a very weary eye towards anything that has been power, part of this power structure. But yes, this is what they are wanting to do is absolutely, they, they want to make us uncomfortable. It's the next phase. They understand people are going to be waking up. People are not going to go along with things so easily. So they're going to try to make life very, very uncomfortable for those that, that don't go with the system. And then those that do go with the system, they're going to make life as, as comfortable as they can for them because they need to have more people, you know, say, hey, I wish I had it easy like that. Ooh, I wish I had that job. Ooh, I wish I had that salary, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it, it is about staying as organic as you possibly can. And it, it's about what are you in alignment with? What, what is okay with you? And really not having a lot of judgment with that because people have different needs. People have different necessities and you may need to go along with some parts of the system just to, so that you are okay, so that you can function, you know, but it, it's about just not overdoing it and not stepping in to such a high degree that you get in over your head. But doing the best you can with what you have, you know, little baby steps in the right direction is, is where we want to keep heading. When I think about when in, uh, in Israel, for instance, there was so many people out inside, outside of Bibi's house here. Uh, it was looking very tenuous as to whether he would be able to stay in power. What if he didn't? And why did he come back? I mean, they didn't, you know, he wasn't loved. He's never been loved. Actually, he's probably one of the most disliked people, and I'm going to use that word, uh, on, on planet Earth. In fact, I bet you more people <laughs> can agree that this person is completely demonically controlled. And he looks at the hand signals, giving him secret code. This is what they do. They're in a private club. Uh, they know they have to speak, um, making it look like they're really concerned about you. But in reality, no, they're just managing the farm. They're managing the farm. That's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what they do, you know, and they have this, uh, you know, club where they just sort of do things and they understand what's going on and they have a totally different language than what we do. They have a completely different education than we do. What could that be besides a bowl for a giant? I mean, that that reminds me of a cereal bowl or a soup bowl. Maybe it was an old satellite dish. 
Oh yeah, maybe it was a UFO, you know, yeah, a saucer, and then the bottom UFO. fell out. Yeah, the bottom fell I don't know. I mean, you know, fee fi fo fum. This 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 <laughs> this looks like a bowl to me. Uh, you know, Boro Buddha Temple in Java. This reminds me too. You know, they are sweeping right now under the rug as much as they can. A couple of the most amazing uh, places we've discovered, Gobekli Tepe, and I at the moment forget the name of the one that I want to say is in Indonesia. Um, we saw Graham Hancock do a thing on it, and it's under, uh, mo almost entirely still um, not dug out. And they're, they're trying to stop this. You know, they are building on top of Gobekli Tepe, you know, again, um, Jimmy uh, Corsetti has been talking about this and bringing a lot of attention to it because it should be infuriating us all. They, they, they can't have us understanding the totality. They can't have the masses. I know you guys get it, and, and we, we get it. And, and yeah, there's, there's some things that we don't get, like the, the time factor, um, because the time factor I, is, I feels almost like it's impossible to get. And in fact, Cindy channeled in the middle of the night last night, and um, that was one of the things that we discussed was was time because it is completely relative. And I know that's mind blowing. Time is not a constant. It is not a constant. It is completely relative, and it's an illusion. It truly, truly is an illusion for us to operate in this world. Look at this sovereign citizen. No driver's license, insurance required. Peace on earth, goodwill towards men, free men, not for commercial use, private, mode of travel, traveling, not driving. Yeah, we have to, we're going to have to work our way out of this system. It's going to keep trying to do what it's doing. And, you know, I saw this, I was like, wait a minute, holy cow, did they resurrect Rowdy Rowdy Piper? Uh, and this turns out it's Sean Grayson, um, you know, who pleaded not guilty to first degree murder. But when I saw this, I thought that they pulled Roddy back from the grave because he, he did pass on er, early. And in case you don't know wrestling, uh, this is Rowdy Roddy Piper. You know, They Live. You remember that movie, They Live? Uh, the, the, the things like Cindy's analyzing all the books last night in the background, trying to make things out. Edgar Casey on ESP. Oh, oh yeah. It, it, it really is a wild reality. And in fact, you know, I, I have shared with you guys, I actually met him in person after that event up at the um, Hard Rock Cafe in Toronto, Canada. And he, he told me, you know, he, he was like, this is real. He's, people won't believe it, but it's real. He said, you got to watch it. He was a great guy, actually. Sleep, obey, consume. Yes, don't question the narrative. Yes, if you haven't seen it, please go see it because it tells you everything. Yeah, it's really super cheesy, but, it, you know, sometimes we need a good cheesy movie in our lives to get the truth across, you know, a little bit of sugar gets the medicine in so you understand what's going on. But he really did. That movie is great uh, in understanding. And those who are awake, it'll really hit home. Um, so, yeah. I just thought this was absolutely gorgeous. This is the Faroe Islands, uh, which is off the coast of the UK. Uh, if I'm remembering correctly, it's kind of in between uh, the UK and heading towards Iceland. Um, look at that. I mean, nature is incredibly beautiful. This planet is amazing. Uh, the only thing that's making this planet <laughs> less than some Garden of Eden is really the structure of this political system that has us controlled and wrangled and lassoed. The only way to break free and recreate ourselves a little paradise here on the planet is the the system going bye-bye. And again, I've said it many times, I think Elon will be able to get enough rockets to get all of the political agents uh, out of this place. And then when I saw this guy, he remind me of Anubis. Uh, and look at him. It, what a beautiful pup. Look at his his face. Uh, it's just like an Egyptian relief. 
In fact, this is an ancient breed of dog that's at least 3,000 years old. So this is what they say. Um, he is certainly very, very handsome. Or is that a she? Whoops. She's she's very handsome. <laughs> is that okay? Is that politically correct? I, I do I have my pronouns okay? I think I think we'll be all right. We'll be all right this time, but let that be a warning. She's regal. She is. She's very regal. She's very put together. She's very intelligent. And then there's these guys. This is cuteness overload. This is what we need at the end of every <clears throat> video that exposes truth is some cuteness overload and little puppies who are snuggling and stretching their brand new little limbs and figuring things out and napping. Some of us need to do more of this too. Absolutely. You know, again, listen to your body when you need to rest, rest. This is a time of uh, great purging, great processing, and, and it is a period of ascension. Again, we want to, as always, uh, thank everybody that's supporting us over here at Patreon. We couldn't do it without you guys. Exclusive videos uh, several times each week and a little bit more frank um, discussion without hiding certain words. <laughs> as always, much love, source blessing. Namaste. Namaste.